enjoyed my talk with Colonel Gibbons. <laughs> well, how was it to me? No, dear. Are the biscuits good? Holy! Want to come and have a biscuit, Dr. Margaret? No, thank you. I'll have a appetite for dinner now. I always eat tomato your face. It tastes that lovely jam. But you haven't tried the spoon. We always put a la little apple in the bit to take the tart and stuff. <laughs> no, thank you. We'll send you over a job. No. You keep it here so I'd be sure of having your biscuit. I do hope they don't make us use that imitation flower again. I mean, with this war trouble, it may not be their charitable to me, but I come to the conclusion that this Mr. Hitler is a Christian. <laughs> <laughs> You're a sheriff. Yes, Teddy? Point your gun the other way. Gun? Teddy. To the west. There's your danger. There's your enemy. Japan. Why, yes. Yes, of course. Teddy. Nowhere, Tabby. Not too much talk about Europe, and more talk about the canal. Let's mm -hmm. not talk about war. Won't you another cup of tea, dear? No, thank you, Aunt Abby. Dr. Harper? No, thank you. You know, Miss Abby, war and violence seem far removed from these surroundings. Do you think peace would be good? Yes, peaceful. The gentle virtues. The gentle virtues that allow candlelight, good manners, and low taxes. It's one of the old houses in Brooklyn. It's just as it was when Grandfather Rooster built and furnished it, except the electricity. And we use it as little as possible. It was Mortimer who persuaded us to put it in. Why, yes. Your nephew Mortimer seems only live by electric light. The poor boy has to work so late. I understand he's taking a lane with him to the theater again tonight. Uh, Teddy, your brother Mortimer will be here a little bit later. Delighted. So how do you think Mortimer takes the theater with him? I must admit, Miss Abby, it is a new experience for me to wait up until 3 o'clock in the morning for my daughter to run home. Oh, Dr. Harper, I hope you don't disapprove of Mortimer. Well... We feel so guilty if you did, Sister Martha and I. I mean, since it was here in your home that our daughter met Mortimer. Of course, Miss Abby. Now, see, you believe that I do find Mortimer himself to be quite the worthy gentleman. It's just that I watched the growing intimacy between him and my daughter as a trepidation for one reason, Miss Abby. You mean stomach, Dr. Harper. Stomach? His dyspepsia. His father was a so poor boy. No, Miss Abby, I'll be frank. I'm talking about Mortimer's unfortunate connection with the theater. The theater? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, Dr. Harper. You have to write for a New York newspaper. I know, Miss Abby. I know. It's just that a dramatic critic is, a dramatic critic is always exposed to the theater, and I, do not, and I do find it, you find it interesting. Well, not Mortimer. You need have no fear of that. Why, <laughs> Mortimer hates the theater. Really? <laughs> oh, yes. He writes awful things about the Blame him, poor boy. He's so happy writing about real estate, which he really knew something about. <laughs> then he made him take terrible night positions. My God. But as he says, the theater can't last much longer anyway. But in the meantime, it's a living. <laughs> yes, I think we give the theater another year to go back. Well, now, who do you suppose that? <laughs> <laughs> Make 
We'll have to see what's in our first one. There'll be plenty of other first dates in October. Hello, Mortimer. <laughs> <laughs> How are you, Mr. President? Bully, thank you. Just bully. What news have you brought me? Just this, Mr. President. The country is squarely behind you. I know. This is it wonderful. Well, goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. Where are you off to, Teddy? Panama. Panama's in the south. He did watch the cow down there. Oh, you're so sweet with him. And he's very fond of you. <clears throat> Teddy always was my favorite brother. Favorite? Were there more of you? Another brother, Jonathan. I've never heard of him. Your aunt's never mentioned him. No, we don't like to talk about Jonathan. He left home very early by request. Jonathan was the type of boy who liked to cut worms in two. Oh, with his teeth. <laughs> well, what became of him? Well, I don't know. He always wanted to practice surgery like grandfather, but he never went to medical school, so his practice got him into quite some trouble. Are we going to the theater? No, no, we're skipping there. We want us to meet for half an hour. Well, then I'll leave you two alone together again. No, Father, darling. I'm going to go over and speak to Father. Whenever I go out with you, he likes to pray over me a little. I'll be right back. I'm going to cut me to the cemetery. If the prayer doesn't take too long, I'll have time to lead you beside distilled waters. Mortimer, <laughs> that's the first time I've ever heard you quote the Bible. You know what lame would be a good influence on you? Oh, by the way, I'm going to marry her. What? Oh, darling! Martha, Martha! Come right in here and have some wonderful news for you. Mortimer and Lane are going to be married! Married! Oh, Mortimer! We hoped it would happen just like this. Well, Elaine must be the happiest girl in the world. Happy? Just look at her leaping over those gravestones. <laughs> Uh, 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 so you know how to look. What happened? 
happened to us? He died. <laughs> and Martha, men don't just die and head into window seats. Oh, no, he died first. <laughs> <laughs>
coming in here and dying in that chair? Well, we could depend on that happening again, so... Remember those jars of poison that your grandfather always used to keep up in his laboratory all those years? You know your Aunt Martha's knack for mixing things. Maybe <laughs> enough for pickling. Well, for every gallon of elderberry wine, I'll add one teaspoonful of arsenic, a half teaspoonful of strychnine, and just a pinch of cyanide. You <laughs> have <laughs> uh, quite a kick. Yes, as a matter of fact, one of our gentlemen found time to say, how delicious. <laughs>
Look, Al, there must be some printers left around. The guy who sets my top. You ought to know about what I write. His name's Joe, third machine from the left. Well, listen, Al, you go check. Do you have your own elderberry wishes? No, but the cemetery is full of them. Oh, oh I'm not drinking, but I'm going to start now. Do you use your meals? We might. Let's see whether you like our Thank you. 
escape back into it. Yeah, he's to find I don't show me. <laughs> Looks like the family still lives here. There's something so unmistakably Brucer about the Brucers. I hope there's a fatty cat awaiting the return of the product. Yeah, I'm hungry. Look, show me, please. As though we were expecting a good omen. Who are you? What are you doing here? Why? Aunt Abby, Aunt Martha. It's Jonathan. You get out of here. It's Jonathan, your nephew, Jonathan. Oh, no, you're not. You're nothing like Jonathan. So don't pretend you are. You just get out of here. <laughs> but I am Jonathan, and this is Dr. Einstein. And he's not Dr. Einstein either. Not Dr. Albert Einstein, Dr. Herman Einstein. You're not a nephew, <coughs> Jonathan. Aunt Deb, I see you're still wearing the lovely garnet ring Grandma Brewster bought in England. And you, and Mark, still the high collar to hide the scar where grandfather's acid burned you. His voice is like Jonathan's. Have you been in an accident? No. My face. That's Dr. Einstein's work. He's a plastic surgeon. <coughs> he changes people's faces. But I've seen that fix before. Abby, remember when we took the little short boy to the movies and I was so frightened? It was that face. <laughs> Ladies, don't worry. In the last five years, I gave Shorty three new faces. This last face, well, I saw that picture too, just before I operate. And I was intoxicated. <laughs> you see, Doctor? You see what you did to me? Even my own family! Shorty, you're home in this lovely house. Oh, how often he tells me about Brooklyn. But this house, but this odds that he loves so much. They know it's you, Shawnee. You know it, Shawnee. Said, speak to him. Tell him so. Yes. <laughs> Jonathan, where have you been all these years? Yes, Jonathan, where have you been? Oh, England, South Africa, Australia. The last five years, Chicago. Dr. Einstein and I were in business there together. <laughs> we were in Chicago for the World Fair. Yes, we found Chicago awfully warm. Yeah, it's going warm for us, too. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's great to be back in Brooklyn. And you, Abby, Martin, you don't look a day older, just as I want to for you. Sweet, charming, hospitable. And dear Teddy, did he get into politics? My little brother, Doctor, was determined to become president. Teddy's fine. He's <clears throat> fine. And Mortimer's well, too. I know about Mortimer. I've seen his picture at the head of his columns. He's evidently fulfilled all the promise of his early nasty nature. We're very fond of Mortimer. Well, Johnson, it was nice to have seen you. Bless you, Aunt Martha. It's good to be home again. Well, Martha, we must have let this on the stove boil over. Yes, if you'll excuse us for a moment, Johnson, unless you're in a hurry to be somewhere. There's Shawnee. <laughs> Where do we go from here? We got to think fast. Uh, the police. The police have got pictures of that face. I got to operate on you right away. We got to find some place for that. We got, we got to find a place for Mr. Spinalzo, too. Don't waste any worry on that rat. But surely we got a hot stiff on our hands. Forget Mr. Spinalzo. But you can't just leave a dead body in the humble seat. <laughs> <laughs> you shouldn't have killed him, Shawnee. He's a nice fellow. He gives us a lift. And what happens? He sounds like Boris Karloff. That's your work, Doctor. You did this to me. Shorty, we find some place. If you don't quit, tonight. But Shorty, I'm hungry. I'm weak. Please. Johnson, we're glad you remembered us. We took the trouble to come in and say hello. But we were never happy in this house, and we were never happy while you were in it. We just come in to say goodbye. Yeah, Tabby. I can't say that your feelings toward me come as a surprise. I've spent a great many hours regretting the many heartaches I must have given you as a boy. You were quite a try on us, But my great disappointment is for Dr. Einstein. I promised him that no matter how rushed we were in passing through Brooklyn, I'd take the time to bring him here for one of Aunt Martha's home-cooked dinners. Oh, I was afraid there wouldn't be enough. It's a pretty good size pot roast. Pot roast? I think the least we can do is... Thank you, Aunt Martha. We'll stay to dinner. Well, we'll hurry it along. Yes. Jonathan, if you want to freshen up, you can use the washroom in Grandfather's old laboratory. Uh, 
That's still there. Yes, this is elastic. Well, I'll help Martha get things started since we're all in a hurry. Hey, you get to need anything. Grandfather's laboratory. And just as it was, Dr. Perfect operating room. Too bad we can't use this. After you finish with me, why, we can make a fortune here. Grandfather's laboratory, that large ward in the attic, tent beds, and Dr. Brooklyn is crying for your talents. Why work yourself up, Shoney? Besides, I think we're here too late for Brooklyn. You don't know this town, Doctor. Practically everybody in Brooklyn knows a new face. <coughs> so many of the old faces are looked up. A small percentage. And the boys in Brooklyn are famous for being generous in the stay of prison. Take it easy, Shoney. Dogs, they don't want us here. We're here for dinner, aren't we? No, but after dinner? Leave it to me, Doctor. This place will be our headquarters for years. That would be beautiful, Shoney. This nice, quiet house. Your aunt, what sweet ladies. And lots of our dear, dear. I get some bags, yeah? No, Doctor. We must wait till we're invited. But you just said so. We'll be invited. <laughs> when did they say nine? Doctor, two helpless old women. <laughs> it's life comes to a beautiful dream. Oh, it is that. I hope you're not dreaming. I'm so peaceful. <laughs> That's why this house is so perfect for us, Doctor. It's so peaceful. <laughs> Jonathan and his friend have to go back to their hotel. 
General Gorthos, inspect the canal. Our life, Mr. President. We go to Panama. Bully, bully, follow me, General. It stands out, you know. <laughs> then, bon voyage. <laughs> hey, I must correct your misapprehension. You spoke of our hotel. We have no hotel. We came directly here. Well, there's a very nice little hotel here. Aunt Martha, this is my home. Johnson, you can't stay here. We need our rooms. You need them? Yes, for our lodgers. Are there lodgers in this house? Well, not at the moment, but we plan to have some. Then my room is still free. But there's no room for Dr. Einstein. He'll share the room with me. No, Johnson, I'm afraid you can't stay here. Dr. Einstein and I need a place to sleep. You remember this afternoon that as a boy I could be disagreeable. It wouldn't be very pleasant for any of us here. Perhaps we'd better let them stay the night. Just go for night, Johnson. That's settled. Now, we'll get our room ready. It only needs airing out. Yes, we keep it ready to show our lodgers. I think you and Dr. Einstein will find it comfortable. You're the most distinguished guest in Dr. Einstein. You don't appreciate his skill, but you will. In a few weeks, you'll see me look like a very different Jonathan. He can't operate on you here. When Dr. Einstein and I get organized, when we resume practice, oh, I forgot to tell you, we're turning Grandfather's old laboratory into an operating room. Jonathan, we will not let you turn the house into a hospital. A hospital? Heavens no! It'll be a beauty parlor. He's shorting down to the cellar. Dr. Einstein, my two aunts have invited us to live with them. Oh, you fixed it? Well, just over now. Please get our room ready immediately. Well, for tonight. He's showing you. When I go down to the cellar, what do you think I'll find? What? The Panama Canal. The Panama Canal. <laughs> it just fits Mr. Spinozo. It's a whole teddy duck. Six foot long, four feet wide. <laughs> down there? You'd think they knew we were bringing Mr. Spinozo along. Now that's hospitality. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a good joke on my aunt. They'll be in a house with a body buried in the cellar. But how do we get him in? Can't bring him in through the front door. We'll bring the car between the house and the cemetery. Then when everyone's gone to bed, we'll bring Mr. Spinozzo in through the window. Bed? Just think, we go to bed tonight. Easy, doctor. Remember, you're operating tomorrow, and this time you'd better be sober. I fixed you up beautiful. And if you don't... Jonathan, your room's ready. Then you two can go to bed. Dr. Einstein and I are just moving the car up behind the house. It's all right. I don't want to leave it in the street. That might be against the law. <laughs> what are we going to do? Well, for one thing, we're not going to let them stay more than one night. What will the neighbors think? People coming in here with one face and going out with another. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to do about Mr. Hoskins? Oh, Mr. Hoskins? It can't be a very comfortable for him there. We'll, we'll have Teddy bring him downstairs right away. Abby. I will not invite Jonathan to the funeral services. Well, we'll just have to get him to bed right away. General Gorthos was very pleased. He said the canal was just the right size. Teddy, Teddy, there's been another yellow fever victim. <laughs> Dear me, this will be a shock to the general. Well, yes, we mustn't tell him about it. <coughs> this is the department. No, we must keep it a secret. It would just spoil his visit. I'm sorry, Aunt Abby, he'll have to be told. Military regulations, you know. No, a we... state secret. Yes, a state secret. You have the word of the President of the United States. Cross my heart and hope to die. <coughs> How are we going to keep this a secret? Well, you go downstairs and I'll turn out the lights. And when it's all dark, you come up and take the poor man down to the canal. Now, go along, Teddy, and we'll go down later and hold perfect. You may announce the President will say a few words. Where is the poor devil? He's in the window seat. It seems to be spreading. We've never had yellow fever there before. <laughs> <laughs> well, when Jonathan and Dr. Einstein come back, I think we should get them to bed right away. Yes. And then by the time they're asleep, we'll be all dressed for the funeral. Abby, I've never even seen Mr. Hawkins. Oh, my goodness, you're right. You are out. Will you come right over here? Oh, <laughs> really very nice of him, considering that he's a Methodist. <laughs> We're bringing the luggage through here. Jonathan, your room's waiting for you. You can go right up. I'm 
I'm afraid we don't keep Brooklyn hours, but you two run them off to bed. Well, you two must be very tired. We don't go to bed this early. You should. It's about time I came home to take care of you. We weren't planning on going. And what the? Did you hear me say go to bed? The instruments can go to the laboratory in the morning. Now then, we're all going to bed. I'll turn out the lights when you're up. Another flight, Doctor. Run along again, Martha. All right, Aunt Abby. I'll be right off. Now, Aunt Abby, turn out the lights.
you're lying. I think she told the truth, Sean. Even at the door, eh? I think she's lying. Breaking into a house at this time of night. I think she's dangerous. She should be allowed around loose. Take your hands off of me! Teddy! It's going to be a private funeral. Teddy, Teddy, tell me that who I am! Well, that's my daughter, Alex. Oh, my God. 
what's going on in this house? You were supposed to take me to dinner in the theater tonight. You called it off. You asked me to marry you. I said that I would. And five minutes later, you threw me out. Tonight, just after your brother tries to strangle me, you want to chase me home? Now listen, Mr. Brewster, before I go home, I want to know where I stand. Do you love me? I love you very much, Elaine. In fact, I love you so much, this why I can't marry you. Have you suddenly gone crazy? <laughs> oh, but it's only a matter of time. I can't have blood in my family. <laughs> That's why I can't marry you, dear. No, wait a minute, dear. You've got to do better than that. No, dear. There's a strange taint in Brewster blood. <laughs> He's my family, but it's what you'd expect if Strindberg had written Hell's Now, yeah, just because Teddy's a little no. off. No, it was way back to the first Brewster, the one who came over on the main bus. You know in those days how the Indians used to scout the settlers? He used to scout the Indians. Mortimer, that's ancient history. No, my whole family. Take my grandfather, for instance. He used to test his patent medicine out on dead people to see if he killed them. He wasn't so crazy. He made a million dollars. And then there's Jonathan. You just said he's a maniac. He tried to kill you. But he's your brother, not you, Mortimer. I'm in love with you. And then there's Teddy. You know Teddy. He thinks he's Roosevelt. No, dear, no Brewster should marry. I realized that if I knew that then, I would have tried to stop my father from doing so. Oh, okay. <laughs> You're crazy. Look at your aunt. They're Brewsters, aren't they? Oh, In the same as <laughs> <laughs> Well, even they have their peculiarities. Lovely peculiarities, kindness, generosity, human sympathy. There's another one! <laughs> Irrationally, but just put it down to the fact that I'm a mad booster. If you think you're going to get out of this by pretending you're insane, you're crazy. Maybe you're not going to marry me, but I am going to marry you. I love you, you dope. Well, if you love me, will you get the hell out of here? <laughs> At least walk me home, won't you? I'm afraid. I'm afraid. A little walk through the cemetery. Warmer, will you kiss me goodnight? Of course, dear. Good night, dear. I'll call you in a day or two. You. Critic. <laughs> <laughs> and Abby and Martha come in here. Come in, in here now. Yes, you. What is it? Where's the I thought I told you not to let anyone in this house while I was gone. You were Jonathan. I don't mean Jonathan. Doctor Einstein. I don't mean Doctor Einstein. Who's in the window seat? We told you, Mr. Hoskins. <laughs> That's not Mr. Hoskins. Oh, can that be? <laughs> and Abby, are you trying to tell me you've never seen this man before? I certainly am. Why, this is a fine how you do. It's getting to anybody who thinks you can walk into this house. What's a try to get out of this? That's another one of your gentlemen. Mortimer, how can you say such a thing? That man's an imposter. <laughs> Oh, 
Jonathan, let Aunt Martha see what's in the window seat. And Abby, I owe you an apology. Jonathan, Dr. Einstein, and our cold companion are just leaving. Jonathan, you're my brother. You're a Brewster. I give you a chance to take the evidence and get out. You can't ask for more than that. Very well. In that case, I'm going to have to call the police. Don't reach for that telephone! Are you still giving the orders after seeing what's happening, Mr. Spinalto? Get going now. 
of real. Doctor, this affair between my brother and me has got to be settled. Now, oh, Shawnee, you are trouble enough as it is. Your brother, he has a chance to get away. What more could you ask? You don't understand. This goes back a good many years. Now, Shawnee, let's get going. We're not going. We're going to sleep right here tonight. He's a cop in the kitchen in Mr. Spinozzo on the window seat. That's all he's got on us. We'll take Mr. Spinozzo down and dump him in the bed. Come right back here. If he tries to interfere. Now, Shawnee. Doctor, you know when I make up my mind. Yeah, when you make up your mind, you lose your head. Boot we need a good place for you. Doctor! Okay, we stick together. Someday we get stuck together. Uh, if we're going to be coming back, can we go to take these with us? No, leave them here. I can suffer. Too fast. But also can go out the same way he came in. Shorty, what's the matter? You know that hole in the cellar? Yes? But we've got an ace in the hole. Come on, I'll show you. Jonathan? Jonathan! 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 Yes, Mortimer? Jonathan, where have you been? I thought I told you to get out of here. We're not going. Oh, you're not, huh? You don't think I'm being serious? We're staying here. Fine, let's get rid of you and O'Hara at the same time. <coughs> Officer O'Hara, come in here. If you tell O'Hara what's in the window seat, I'll tell him what's down in the cellar. Cellar? There's an elderly gentleman down there who appears to be Quite dead. What were you doing in the cellar? What's he doing down in the cellar? No, thanks, ma'am. They were fine. I've had plenty. Now, what are you going to say to O'Hara? Look, Mr. Brewster, the ants aren't here, too. Shall I get them in? No, listen, O'Hara. You've got to go bring it in. The hell with bringing it in. I'll get your ants in here, okay? No, O'Hara, not in front of all these people. Uh, we'll get together someplace later and talk about the place. How about the back of my Kelly? Perfect. You go bring it in and meet at the at Kelly's. Why don't you two go down in the cellar? That's all right for me. Is this a cellar? No! You go bring it and meet me at Kelly's. But you have to bring it on the way. All right, that'll only take a couple of minutes. All right, I'll ditch the officer and be back in five minutes. I expect to find you gone. Just wait for me. We'll wait for him, Doctor. I've waited a great many years for a chance like this. We've got him right where we want him. Did he look guilty? Take the bags up to our room, Doctor. Have they gone? Oh, we thought we heard somebody leave. That was Mortimer. He'll be back in a few minutes. Is there any food left in the kitchen? I think Dr. Einstein and I will enjoy a bite. But you won't have time. Now, if you're still here when Mortimer gets back, he won't like it. He'll like it. He's got to like it. Get something for us to eat while we bury Mr. Spinozzo in the cellar. Oh, no. He can't be in our cellar. No, Jonathan. You have to take him with you. There's a friend of Mortimer's down there waiting for him. A friend of Mortimer's? He and Mr. Spinozzo will get along fine together. They're both dead. They must be Mr. Hoskins. Mr. Hoskins? <laughs> you know about what's down in the cellar? Of course we do. And he's no friend of Mortimer's, but he's one of our gentlemen. Your gentlemen? <laughs> we won't have any strangers buried in our cellar. But who? Mr. Hoskins? Mr. Hoskins isn't a stranger. Besides, there isn't any room for him. The cell is crowded already. Crowded? With what? Well, there are 12 graves down there now. Uh, 12 graves? And that means very little room, and we're going to need it. You mean, you and Aunt Martha have murdered? Murdered? <laughs> Certainly not. Why, it's one of our charities. Why? <laughs> you can take your Mr. Spinaldo out of here. Shuni, he's been all over the world. They stay right here in Brooklyn do just as good as you do. <laughs> <laughs> what? You've got 12? They've got 12. I've got 13. Ah, uh -huh, Shawnee. 12. 13. There's Mr. Spinalzo. The first one in London, two in Johannesburg, one in Sydney, one in Melbourne, two in San Francisco, one in Phoenix, Arizona, Phoenix, the filling station. Three in Chicago and one in South Bend. That makes 13. Ah, uh ah, -uh, Shawnee. The one in South Bend don't count. He died of pneumonia. He would have got pneumonia if I had shot him. 
Ah, Shani, he died of pneumonia. He don't count. He count to me. I say 13. Ah, Shani, you got 12 and they got 12. <laughs> so all babies are just as good as you are. <laughs> oh, they are, are they? Well, that's easily taken care of. All I need is one more. Just one more. That's all. Well, you're right. <laughs> Sorry, 
rich stuff. <laughs> Schmooze as a lake. They never knew we were even down there. Oh, the bed is wunderbar already. Forty eight hours we didn't sleep. Surely, come on, we go to bed, yeah? You're forgetting, Doctor. What? My brother Mortimer. Surely, tonight? We do that tomorrow or the next day. No, Doctor, tonight! Now! Surely! Me! I'm tired! Well, tomorrow I go to Oakley! Yes, you're operating tomorrow, but tonight you take care of Mortimer. Surely, not tonight. We go to bed, yeah? Doctor! Look at me! You can see it's gonna be done, can't you? Uh, I can see. I know that look. It's a little too late for us to dissolve our partnership. Okay. Okay. We do it. But the quick way. The quick twist like in London. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, Doctor, I think this calls for something special. I think perhaps the Melbourne method. Funny. Nine. Not that. Two hours. Well, Benny was all over what? The fellow in London was just as dead as the fellow in Melbourne. We had to work too fast in London. But Melbourne, there was something to remember. Remember? I wish I did it. Nine, Shawnee. Not Melbourne, not me. <coughs> yes, Doctor. Where are your instruments? I won't do it, Shawnee. I won't do it. Get your instruments! Nine, Shawnee. Where are you? Oh, yes. You hit them in the cell. Where? I won't tell you. Ah, find him, Doctor! Don't do that, Mr. President. I cannot sign any proclamation without consulting my cabinet. Well, <laughs> this must be a secret. A secret proclamation? How unusual. Japan mustn't know about it until after it's signed. Japan? I'll sign it right away. You have my word for it. I can let the cabinet know later. Let's go sign it, Mr. President. You wait here. A secret proclamation has to be signed in secret. <laughs> but at once, Mr. President. I'll have to put on my signing clothes. Oh. <laughs> you go now, eh? Uh, no, Doctor, I have something to tend to, something very important. Please, you go now. Listen, Doctor, I have nothing against you personally, and you seem to be a fine fellow. But just take my advice and get just as far away from this house just as quickly as possible. How, yeah? You get leaving quick. All right, don't say I didn't warn you. I'm warning you. Get out quick. Things are going to start popping around here very quickly. Listen, <coughs> Shawnee's in a bad mood. When he gets like this, he's a madman. Things happen. Terrible things. Jonathan doesn't worry me now. Ah, him. Those are things you watch teach you anything. About what? Well, at least the people in the place that they got, they got some sense. Oh, that more than you do. You think so? <laughs> yeah. You think people in plays act intelligently? I wish you had to sit through some of the ones I had to sit through. <laughs> Take the little locus I saw tonight, for instance. In this play, there's a man. He's supposed to be bright. He's in a house who knows it's full of murderers. He's even been warned to get out of the house. Does he go? <laughs> no. He stays right there. Now I ask you, Doctor. Is that something an intelligent person would do? You're asking me. He didn't even have enough sense to be frightened, to be on guard. The murderer even asked him to sit down. You mean, won't you sit down? Believe it or not, that was in there too. Well, what did he do? He sat down. <laughs> now, mind you, this fellow's supposed to be bright. So there he sits, just waiting to be trucked up. And what do you think they use the time for? What? The curtain cord. Well? Why not? A good idea. Very convenient. A little too convenient. One of these playwrights going to start using some creativity. The curtain cord? He didn't see him get it. See him? Get his back turned to him. Is that the stuff we have to sit through night after night? And they say the critics are killing the theater. It's the playwrights who are killing the theater. So there he sits, the big dope. This fellow who's supposed to be bright. Just waiting to be trussed up and gagged. Hey, John, get off of me! Shall we are we still doing the Melbourne method? Yes, Doctor, the Melbourne method. Get his mic. I'm working on a short rotation. You brought him back there? Yes, I got him, Doctor. Well, you're right about that fellow. He 
wasn't very bright. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mortimer, without any further interruptions, stop it. Please. We'll finish the story. Mortimer, I've been away for 20 years. <clears throat> and not once in all that time, my dear brother, were you out of my mind. In Melbourne one night, I dreamed of you. When we landed in San Francisco, I felt this strange satisfaction. Once more, I was in the same country as you. Now, Doctor, we get to work. Please, Johnny, for me, it's the quick way. Doctor? This is really going to be an artistic achievement. I mean, after all, we're performing in front of a very distinguished critic. Johnny! Doctor! OK, we do it. It's over this. All ready for you, Doctor. I don't know how to drink. I can't do this without a drink. Pull yourself together, Doctor. I got to have a drink. Then we were here this afternoon. There was fine that remember? Oh, man, it's you. Look, Sean, think. That's all there is. I, I should pity with you. Come on, be bold immediately. <laughs> Oh, I pulled 
Are you sure? <laughs> I just wanted to talk, talk to you about my brother, Ted. The one who flew the bugle last night. Mr. Brewster, we ain't gonna talk about that. He's got to be put away. Oh, no, I play the dream. In fact, it's all arranged for. See, I have Teddy signed commitment papers. We had Dr. Gilchrist, the family physician, sign them, and I sign them as next to Ken, you see. Where is he going? Happy day. All right. I don't care where he goes as long as he goes. Oh, he's going over here. Now, about everything that's happened around here, I want you to know that Teddy is responsible. Now, about those 13 bodies in the cellar. Yeah, yeah. Those 13 bodies in the cellar. It ain't enough that the neighbors are all afraid of him, afraid of him and his disturbing the peace with that bugle. But can you imagine what would happen if that cock like story about 13 bodies in the cellar got around? And now he's starting a little fever scare. Cute, ain't it? 13 bodies in the cellar. <laughs> you don't think anyone would believe that story, do you? You don't. You just can't tell. Some people are just dumb enough. <laughs> you don't know what to believe sometimes. About a year ago, some crazy guy started a murder rumor over in Greenpoint, and I had to dig up a half acre lot just to prove that. Uh, excuse me, just a minute, won't you? Good morning, murderer. Good morning, dear. This is Mr. Witherspoon. Mm -hmm. Please come to me, Teddy. You mean Teddy? Mr. Witherspoon's the superintendent of Happydale. Oh, well, come right in. This is Captain Rooney. Lieutenant Rooney. And I'm glad you're here, Super, because you're taking him back with you today. Today? <clears throat> I can tell that. Not today. Look, Elaine, I have some very important things to tend to, so why don't you just run along home and I'll call you up for a day or two. No. I have no idea it was this immediate. The papers are signed. He goes today. Complete insubordination. You men will find out I'm no molly cuddle when the President of the United States is treated like that. What is this country coming to? There's your hand, Super. Hold on just a minute. Mr. President, I have some very good news for you. Your term of office is officially over. Is this March the 4th? Practically. Uh, <laughs> Let's see. Oh, now I go on my hunting trip to Africa. I shall get started immediately. <coughs> Is he trying to move into the White House before I move out? Who, Teddy? Tap! No, that's not Tap. Ah, Mr. Witherspoon. He's the superintendent of. He's to be your guide to Africa. Boy, boy, I shall bring down my equipment immediately. When the safari comes, tell them to wait. Goodbye, Aunt Abby. Goodbye, Aunt Martha. I'm on my way to Africa. Isn't it wonderful? Good morning, darlings. Oh, we are visitors. Uh, this is Lieutenant Green. My, how do you do, Lieutenant? My, you look like a butt-butted policeman, say you are. Why, the lieutenant is here, you see. Teddy blew his bugle again last night. Oh, yes. We're going to speak to Teddy about that. I'm afraid it's a little more serious than that, Miss Brewster. <laughs> uh, and I don't think you've met Mr. Witherspoon yet. He's the superintendent of Happydale. Oh, Mr. Witherspoon, how do you do? You must have come to meet Teddy. He's come to take him. And he's the police want Teddy to go there today. Oh, no. Not while we're alive. I'm sorry, Miss Brewster, but it has to be done. The papers are signed, and he's going along with the superintendent. We won't permit it. We'll promptly take the bugle away from him. We won't be separated from Teddy. I'm sorry, ladies, but the law's the law. He's committed himself, and he's going. Well, if he's going, then we're going too. Yes, you'll have to take us with him. <laughs> well, why not? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's sweet of them to want to, but I'm afraid it's impossible. You see. We can't take sane people at Happy Dale. <laughs> <laughs> if you'll allow us to come and live with Teddy, then we'll see that Happy Dale is in our will, and for a very generous amount. Well, the Lord knows we could use the money, but I'm afraid. Now, let's be sensible about this, ladies. For instance, here I am wasting my morning when I've got serious work to do. You know there are still murders to be solved in Brooklyn. Yes! Oh, uh, 
Partner. Uh, and Dave told me his bugle blowing and the neighbors all afraid of him. But things would just get worse. Sooner or later, we'd be put to the trouble of digging up your cellar. Our cellar? Yeah. Your nephew's been coming around to them that there are 13 bodies buried down there. But there are 13 bodies in our cellar. <laughs> if that's why Teddy has to go away, then come right downstairs with us. It will go to you. <laughs> well, there's one, Mr. Spinaldo, who doesn't belong here, and will have to leave. But the other 12 are our gentlemen. Now, why? I don't think the lieutenant wants to go digging around in our cellar. He was telling me that um, just last year he had to dig up a whole half acre lot for it, you lieutenant. That's right. Oh, you would have to dig here. The graves are all marked. We oh. put flowers on them every Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> flowers? <coughs> Superintendent, don't you think you can find room <laughs> for these ladies? Well, I... Please come along with us. We will show you the graves. <laughs> I'll take your word for it, lady. I'm a busy man. How about it, Super? Well, they have to be committed. Well, Teddy committed himself. Can't they commit themselves? Can't they sign the papers? Why, certainly. If we can live with Teddy, then we'll sign the papers. Where are they? Yes, where are they? Come sit down. Please hold the seat, Lieutenant. Good morning, Mr. Klein. Good morning, Mr. Klein. Are you here, too? Yeah, me and Brophy have got your other nephew off in the kitchen. Well, sign him up, Superintendent. I want this all cleaned up. Thirteen bodies. Now, if you'll sign here. And you here, Aunt Abby. I'm really looking forward to going. The neighborhood here has changed as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking, I'm front lawn again. Oh, we're overlooking something. What? You see, we need the signature of a doctor. Dr. Einstein, come over here a minute, won't you? I need you to sign some commitment papers. <laughs> please, I must. Oh, please, just come right over here, doctor. Some time last night, I thought the doctor was going to be performing surgery on me. Yes, come right over here, doctor. Just sign right there, doctor. Are you leaving, doctor? I really think I must be going. Aren't you going to wait for Jonathan? I don't think we're going to the same place. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> oh, hello, Lane. Glad to see you. Hold on a minute, won't you? Don't worry. I'm going to. <laughs> hello, Al. Rudy. Yeah, we got the guy that's wanted over in Indiana. Now, there's a description of his accomplice on the desk there. Read it to me. Yeah, about five foot nine. 154 pounds, blue eyes, talks with a German accent. Moses is a doctor. Thanks, Mac. It's all right, Lieutenant. The doctor here has just completed the signatures. Uh, thanks, Doc. You're really doing Brooklyn a service. <laughs> now, Mr. Bruce, you'll sign here. That's everything complete. Everything legal? Oh, yes. Well, Auntie's got your safe. When do you think you'll be ready to start? Uh, Mr. Witherspoon, why don't you go upstairs and tell Peggy we can bring along? Upstairs? Here, I'll show you. No, Mortimer, we want to talk to you. Yes, Mr. Witherspoon. Upstairs to the left. Well, Mortimer, now that we're leaving, this house really is yours. Yes, dear. We want to live here now. No, Aunt Abby. This house is full of too many memories. But uh, you'll need a place to live once you and Elaine are married. That's very indefinite, darling. It's nothing of the kind. We're going to be married right away. Mortimer, Mortimer, we're really worried about something. Well, what, dears? You're going to love it, happy. <laughs> oh, yes. We're very happy about the whole thing. That's just it. We don't want anything to go wrong. Will they investigate those signatures? Oh, they're not going to look into Dr. Einstein. It's not his signature that we're worried about here. It's yours. You see, you signed next to King. Well, of course. Why not? Well, we were never going to tell you, but now you're a man, and it's something
thing that Elaine should know, too. You see, dear, you're not really a Brewster. <laughs> <laughs> Your mother came to visit the cook, and you were born about three months afterward. She was such a sweet woman and such a good cook that we didn't want to lose her, so brother married her. I'm not really a Brewster? Now, don't feel badly about it, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and Elaine, it won't make any difference to you. Elaine? Did you hear that? Do you know what this means? I'm a bastard! <laughs> Ha, 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 ha. 